In this lecture, I'm gonna discuss how buffers help regulate the pH within the respiratory and the digestive system. And what you're looking at on the board, this here is my esophagus, this is the stomach, and this here is the duodenum. And so within the epithelium of the stomach, we have what's known as parietal cells. And parietal cells secrete a strong acid known as hydrochloric acid. So when we add water to hydrochloric acid, this is what we form. H3O plus and our chloride ions. So when there's an increase in H3O plus or an increase in our proton concentration, the effect is a decrease in pH. A decrease in pH means that it's more acidic. And so this acidic kind that's found here within the stomach has to get neutralized once it gets here into the duodenum. And so in order to neutralize this acidic kind, our pancreas secretes pancreatic juice. And this pancreatic juice contains a negatively charged ion known as bicarbonate. So when this acidic chyme gets here into the duodenum, the pancreas secretes the pancreatic juice, which contains the bicarbonate ion. Therefore, we can neutralize this acidic chyme and form what's known as carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is a weak acid. So the difference between a weak and a strong acid is the dissociation in water. So when we have hydrochloric acid added to water, it's gonna completely dissociate. Compared to carbonic acid, not all of those protons get plucked off, okay? So this is how we can help regulate the pH. Therefore, when the acid gets here into the duodenum, the um, bicarbonate ion is gonna form uh, with this proton and form carbonic acid. Therefore, we're going to increase the pH. The pH is increased because the proton concentration is decreasing because we're forming more carbonic acid. Okay, so this is what relates to the digestive system, but how does bicarbonate play a role within the respiratory system? So when we have carbon dioxide in water, if we increase the amount of CO2, it pushes the equation to the right. And as we push it to the right, blood becomes more acidic. So it becomes more acidic because we're increasing the amount of protons. Because uh, as a principle known as uh, Le Chatelier's principle, as we increase the CO2, it'll push the equation this way. Therefore, our pH is going to decrease, we'll have a higher concentration of protons, and the blood becomes more acidic. Now, what happens when we decrease the amount of carbon dioxide? When we decrease the amount of carbon dioxide, it's going to push the equation this way. Therefore, the blood will become more alkaline because the proton concentration is decreasing 
in order to, because what we want to do here is return back to equilibrium. And so as the carbon dioxide decreases, it pushes it this way. Therefore, lowering the proton concentration and increasing the pH. Uh, some examples to describe this phenomenon for the respiratory system. So um, carbon dioxide can accumulate and what can result in, um, from a disease known as emphysema. So with emphysema, the carbon dioxide is going to accumulate and an event known as respiratory acidosis can happen. An example with the lower carbon dioxide concentrations. So when someone hyperventilates, right? Someone has like an anxiety attack, <gasps> right? The CO2 is, um, it's being re removed. And so as the CO2 is decreasing, it pushes the equation this way and the blood becomes more alkaline. And so that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this lecture and learned something here about buffers within the digestive and respiratory system.